My name's John Dimke, I'm MacJu's Chief Engineer on the Water Security Major Projects. Um, it's the middle of August uh, and I'd just like to give you a bit of an update about where we are in construction of the dam. At the moment we're in the basin, stilling basin area of the dam and I'll just point out a few things which are happening here uh, at the present time. So up to my, uh, my right, uh, well, uh, we've actually got the um, work progressing on the uh, outlet works for the dam, um, which at the moment um, are, are basically now all encased in concrete, um, with the exception of the valves being installed, and a lot of work happening at the moment on constructing of the main access road to the toe of the dam. Above that you can see the secondary spillway retaining wall or uh, training wall uh, coming down uh, from the top of the dam um, and it's also the same on the on the left abutment side of the dam uh, where you can see the similar wall. Works happening in the uh, stilling basin area down the bottom of the dam where the uh, where the water comes out down the spillway um, and finally releases into the Cotter River again um, and at that point you can see uh, some of the, the work in actually bringing the water transitioning from the, from the spillway into the Stilling Basin uh, before it's released. Uh, at the front of the Stilling Basin you can see a piece of pipe work coming through the bottom of the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the base of the Stilling Basin, that's the water pipe the water main which is going to be bringing water from the dam um, or from the reservoir um, through to Canberra's water supply system. You can just see the, the piece of pipe emerging from the um, sill of the stilling basin at the moment uh, which will connect up to a new main uh, to be built on the left, left abutment side of the, of the structure. Right up at the top of the dam at the moment you can see some formwork uh, which is being stripped uh, and that's actually a point in the dam which we're calling the aeration step um, and from that point up to the top of the structure very shortly you will see walls being constructed uh, which are the primary uh, sp uh, spillway retaining walls uh, and those walls will extend to the top of the dam. Um, in the aeration chamber we're about to install some pipe work uh, which will allow some air into the uh, very turbulent water as it spills over the dam during extreme floods. It's about 60 metres of height and we've got about 20 metres more of the dam to construct to the top of the, top of the, top of the spillway. That level at the moment was a level where we've just intersected with the, one of the main uh, construction hall roads on the left abutment uh, which has allowed us to actually drive off for the first time since um, about September last year some of the equipment from the structure um, and we've exchanged a few of the vehicles um, which will stay now on the dam until we're finished. We're now up on the top of the dam. The work now is sort of uh, starting to gain a lot of momentum in terms of people being able to see the end of the project whereas uh, earlier we still had a lot of concrete to place now we're down below 100,000 cubic metres. I think the last number I looked at was about below 80,000 cubic metres to actually reach the end point. Um, so you know, people are starting to you know, lift in their spirits a bit as we, as we get towards the end of the job. It's been a long hard run, uh, particularly for the guys that work night shift um, through the frosts um, on their 12 hour shift from 6pm to 6am. The conveyor system you can see over on my, my left here uh, has been used to transport all the concrete down um, about 370,000 cubic metres or about a million tonnes of concrete passing down through that system. As the dam level has risen from the bottom we started off with 10 conveyors in the run from the top of the hill to the bottom. We're now down to the last four uh, and as the level rises uh, we remove one conveyor system uh, section uh, and reposition you know, the, the trailing, uh, the, the, the last unit up a little bit higher um, to where that unit came from so that we've always got a, a system that's 
capable of being driven under by the trucks uh, and get material to where we need it. Roller compacted concrete um, is effectively a very similar to ordinary concrete uh, when it's set um, and it's very difficult to see the difference but in terms of the way it's uh, created is a little bit different to, to normal concrete that people um, see being driven around in agitated trucks. Um, this concrete has got a very low so, uh, amount of cement in it relative to, to ordinary concrete um, and the two main constituents of this uh, concrete uh, are our rock based materials and we've got material from sand through to, to gravel of about 50 millimetre diameter um, making up the uh, aggregates in the concrete. We've then got cement um, about 75 kilograms of cement per, per cubic metre um, and then quite a lot of uh, fly ash um, which actually uh, to, works with the, with the cement to form a cementaceous material um, to actually bind the rock uh, to form the concrete. The concrete itself is delivered very, very dry. It's almost like wet gravel. Um, rather than, than the fluid concrete which most of us are, uh, are used to seeing. Um, and then as you work that material, um, initially spreading it with a bulldozer and then finally rolling it with a vibrating road roller, uh, it compacts to a solid mass uh, which has got the same type of density as, as, as ordinary concrete. And that is what we're trying to achieve. The, one of the main objectives here is to have uh, as limited amount of heat generated by the by the concrete as it as it sets, uh, and by using the fly ash as a replacement for the uh, cement uh, within the concrete, um, we reduce the amount of heat generated during that initial setting process, uh, which can could be cause quite a lot of damage in terms of cracking uh, within concrete, um, particularly in in large placements of concrete. This dam takes about 30 years to reach temperature equilibrium um, and you know, one of the, the, the key issues is about trying to make sure that uh, we manage the release of that heat uh, without causing cracking. We've been fairly fortunate of recent times that uh, we've had good weather. Um, no rain except for a few small showers. It's been very, very cold. Uh, there's a few spots on the dam that don't see the sun um, during the cold uh, winter's weather and the, the, the way the sun's positioned at the present time. Um, but uh, we've been able to survive through those periods. Uh, we still have, every night, uh, we've got to look at putting insulating material on top of the RCC to avoid the uh, freshly placed concrete from freezing.